Welcome to Powerlifting America's National Championships Day 3. I am your host, Six Pack Lapidat. You might know me as King of the Lifts. Today we have the 105, 120, and 120 plus men's divisions. In the 105s, we have Michael Davis looking to send a message to the rest of the world. In the 120s, we have Tristan Nasalrod battling it out with Enrique Lugo to get their selection on the national team spot. In the 120 pluses, the IPF King is back. Jesus Oliveras returns with a twist. He will be facing off with his younger brother, Pablo. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss this. Six Pack Lapidat back in the booth. And today for this session, I got newly crowned 83 kilo American champion ready to go to the World Championships in South Africa. First off, congratulations. It's Delaney Wallace. How do you feel, young man? I uh, appreciate it. I'm, I'm just, uh, just soaking in the moment. Super excited to get back to training and do what I have to do. I know there's a big battle waiting for me, and I'm just ready to go. I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. Got a lot of good people behind me, and I'm just ready. And speaking of people behind you, um, you're coached by Joey Flex. The Flex fam is all over it. Powerlifting American Nationals. We got some Flex fam in this flight. Um, taking a look, we have the 105s, 120s, and 120 pluses looking to join you on Team USA, sir. Flex fam strong. First, we got James Key opening with 125 kilo. And James just taking a token squat. He'll also take a token dead. He is a bench specialist, and you're going to want to pay attention to this mountain of a man in the bench event. I ran into James, not literally in the hallway. The man is enormous. Checking enormous in at around 308 pounds. Yeah, enormous is an understatement. I, I tell you what, when I was playing football, I would love to have a couple of him blocking for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I saw him, I was like, man, you should be in the NFL. <laughs> You're in the wrong sport. For sure. I would, I would feel a little safer. I'll see if, uh, if he does any bodyguard work. 262.5 kilo for Calvin Hugo. 578 pounds. Calvin in the 120 kilo class. And this is Flex Fam right here, isn't it? Flex Strong. We're going to start it off. A lot of Flex boys in this meet, so it's going to be see, it's going to be cool to see them smash weight. Should be a good day. And when you want to get your opener, and Delaney, you just went through this yesterday, you just want to get on the board. You don't want to get anything too spicy too early. Is that right? Absolutely, just keep keep it keep it calm, keep it smooth. RPE six, RPE seven, something you could take for a couple reps. Just get on the board, so then you can play the long game later on and make the jumps you gotta make. Have you ever been in a competition? And that, by the way, is two white lights and two is all he needs. Gets a red by the head judge. Um, have you ever been in a competition where you missed your opener? Uh, actually, yesterday the uh, the bench opener. Um, ah, okay, so that's that, right. That, that would be the first time. But uh, thank God, no squat opener, so we'll knock on wood. Um, but that's probably my worst fear. It's, it's, like, it's like fumbling the open and kickoff. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. The anxiety levels, uh, levels raise a little, especially when you got the world champion or the world uh, team on the line there. you got to represent USA. Martin is lifting as a guest lifter. Martin, part of the SPD family, working all day putting together the stream. Um, and he's actually, after he's done lifting, immediately going to start tearing down and working till the wee hours of the night. My man is hard working, throws on a singlet, and is going to join everybody. Hats off to him, 265. So he said he's probably just looking to have a little bit of fun, not going to overextend. I, if he's like the rest of the SPD workers, I mean, he's already overextended. Bless him. That's why we got the stream we got. Looks okay, good to well. me. Three white lights, the lift is good. Nicolas Gudis. Nicolas Gudis. With a 285 kilo opener at 628 pounds. Gudis is a 120 kilo lifter.
tight price. Well, what do you think, Delaney? It looked easy. I think, think they definitely that was there, so wait for the judges. Thank yeah, you. we'll take a look at the, if we have a side shot here. You know, we mentioned it before, but it bears repeating. These refs are international level refereeing. So this is the highest the standard of judges. You get a touch of this, this is what you're gonna feel Delaney at the World Championships, which is good. Absolutely. Now you know the standard. Yeah, absolutely, they don't give you an inch here. Brandon Dudley, 305 kilo on the bar for him. His nickname is Bam Bam on Instagram. Bam Bam looking to get some experience here. I know the Junior World Championships is his end goal. Fast. No problems there. Three white lights. Now who is this young man, Delaney? Michael, Michael Davis. Davis. 105, 307.5 being loaded on the bar. 677 pounds in the 105 kilo class globally is extremely stacked. Michael Davis looking to join that party. He's absolutely one of my favorite lifters to watch on Instagram. It's just something about his swagger, his energy. It gets me hype every time. Look at he's He's got the swagger, he's got the energy, and he backs it up with the lifts, believe me. There was a lot of hype on this young man, a potential future world champion. You know, the last 105 world champion, one best lifter at the IPF Worlds. That's how stacked the 105s is globally. Oh. <laughs> Easy. Easy. Oh, wow. Michael Davis making a statement. And look at him, stretch off. He doesn't even allow himself a smile. He's so serious. It is, it's, it's all business when you're here. It's all business. You blew that up. We're going to see a lot of that for the rest of the day. Andreas Soto in the 120 pluses, 320 kilos, 705 pounds. Andres, look at another flex athlete. How many, this is, what is going on here, man? <laughs> King Joey Flex. Uh, you Thanos. guys run a bus or something? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we all met up in California and flew that's over right, together. That's right, that's <laughs> right. Soto, looking to take 320 kilos for a ride. Slight pause for a second there. Okay. A little off balance, but I think it was, it was easy. It was easy. Is that, well, yeah, you think it's just a little off balance, that's why the pause yeah. is there? Yeah. yeah. You know, when you, when you have that much weight on the bar, there's a slight shift to move you out of position, but it, once you get back centered and you get your feet underneath you, it's going to fly, and he, he'll, he'll tighten that up. It'll be easy. Tristan Nasalrod, a get the lift lifter. My co-host on the Kingless Podcast, Bill McCarthy's athlete, Arian Messi Kamesi, handling him. Tristan is in the middle of a battle for the 120 kilo title. If he wants to make it to Worlds, he's got to go through Lugo. 325 for his opening squat. Look at Tristan's all serious business on the platform. Couldn't be a nicer man off. That's smooth. That's smooth. Three white lights. And here comes Lugo. 332.5 kilo. 
733 pounds. Sorry about to say. Yeah, so he looks ready to go. They had to stop it. Yeah, he, he's yeah, a, he does. He's, he's a killer. He looks like a killer. Now I had seen him in training videos, training with the likes of Michael Davis, training with the likes of Jesus Oliveras, training with the likes of Pablo Oliveras, training with the likes of you know Ashton Rouska. These are the biggest of big names in powerlifting. If that is the level he's used to lifting at, let's see what he brings to the platform. When you have those kind of training partners, you're not likely to get overwhelmed by the moment when you enter a warm-up room and you see all these big names. Oh wow, that's pretty smooth. What do you think, Delaney? Yeah, I think that's easy. And, and, to, and to your point about lifting with all those high-level guys, it's like being in the football field or being in the, in the weight room with your guys. It's, every day is a dog fight, and so you get out there. There's so much energy to be had, um, and, it, and it translates so well. So you're not going to get caught up in the moment. You're going to do what you have to do. The intensity is going to be right. And it's a dog eat dog world. He's showing it. It's uh. Yeah, it's definitely easier. And uh, look at Pablo Oliveras talking about some of his training partners. Jesus Oliveras' younger brother making an appearance at Powerlifting American Nationals here. 332.5 kilo on the bar for him. 733 pounds. <laughs> and that was fast. And that was fast, ladies and gentlemen. Mindless. Mindless. Oh. oh. You know what? Yeah, it looks like there was a little bit of a hip shift, and one hip was a little high, which made the front a little high as well. N not a miss on strength, so he'll get it next time around. Having Easy. a word with his big brother for a second there. Look at Joey Flex wa waving that chalk out the way. <laughs> oh, whoa. A 410 kilo opener. 903 pounds on his opening squat. Reigning IPF world champion, Jesus Oliveras. If he's opening with 903, where is he going to finish? monster of a man if he came together on the flex fan bus they're taking up about half of it that's for sure go take up more next year <laughs> 410 kilo the strongest man in the IPF today about to do his thing Oh, and that is as quick as you're going to see 410 kilo move. Oh, my. If you thought he was overshooting by opening with 410 kilo, think again. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, you can, you can see it online, you can see it on Instagram all you want, but when you get to actually see something like this in person, there's just, there's just no feeling. Like, you, you, you hold your breath every time, and it just amazes you every single time. It's art. It's it, literally art. It's true. Look at we're spoiled here. You see this stuff on Instagram, but you see it live. 410 kilo, over 900 pounds on a man's back. He walks it, out, walk around with it, let alone squat it to depth and bring it back up. Exactly. It's humbling. The, the first time I ever saw Ray Williams squat 1,000 in person, I, I literally held my breath. I, I saw it on YouTube all the time, and it, it, there's no other feeling like it. You forget to breathe. And James Key is going to allow this to time out and this gives his competitors that that minute to have respite obviously you're a big guy like jesus squatting over 900 pounds an extra minute's going to be appreciated an extra four or five won't be won't be too bad either <laughs> he's a big boy shifting big weights so so far only one lifter has missed it, and that's Pablo Oliveras, younger brother of Jesus, but it wasn't on strength. You know, there's a little bit of, his hips were not exactly aligned 
So maybe one was a little higher than he expected and then even felt. But strength is an issue, just sink it a little bit deeper. That's why you got openers, opening weight, if it's chosen appropriately, you could do that any given day. Joey's probably loading the bar with something he hits, you know, every other day, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're just gonna retake it and it's gonna fly the second time around, just sink down a little bit more, fix the hip shift and it, it'll be good to go. Uh, but it, it'll be interesting to see what he takes on his third. Yeah, I agree, because then it's, do you take your plan second for your third, or do you take your plan third and just make a big jump? I think it really depends, you know, like you always have that catch-22 between, okay, hey, I know that I can do the first, it was just a technicality, the second one's going to be fine, and then God forbid something, you know, something wonky happens on the second rep, and then n now you're in a situation where you're just fighting to be in the ball game. so sometimes right. you just got to take the win, um, and then just readjust from there. Calvin Hugo, 120 kilo class, and he'll be taking a 275 kilos for a second. That's 606 pounds. And it's good. Looks like he's got a man of Lawrence who just competed, now doing some handling. The bar is 650 pounds for the SBD poster boy, Martin Echoes. Lifting as a guest here today. Martin Echoes, 295 on the bar for him, 650 pounds. Bar is ready for Martin. It's all smiles over there. He's, he's, having, he's having a day. He's having fun out there. 30 kilo jump, it's sizable. Probably wasn't sure where strength would be at working all week like he has. And uh, 265 offered little resistance. He was like, you know what? Day's gonna be good. Maybe perhaps I have the strength after all. Throw on 30 kilo. Yeah, I have no doubt that this is gonna fly too. Our producer Pete Spence watching tentatively. He needs him in good shape to help break down all the equipment <laughs> later. <laughs> Go easy, young man, we need you. <laughs> Oh, no, don't stress Pete, he's okay. <laughs> Nicely done, Martin. Nicholas, good ease. 302.5 kilos, 666 pounds. Bar is loaded for Nick Cadiz. Gadis taking a 17.5 kilo jump from his opener. And when you're at this, you know, this kind of kilos loaded on the bar, 17.5 is no big stretch. Especially if you hit an opener a little lower just to get on the board. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to see how the bigger guys take far, far larger jumps than the smaller guys. The smaller and smaller we get body weight size, the, the jumps start to start to expand a little bit more too. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's all the ratios, right? Nicolas braces. Oh, it's worked though, okay. isn't it? Look at, let's see if he's good for it first off. No? There it is, two to one, he gets it. He took a decent jump from his opener to his second. How many more kilos did you want to put on for his third though? Uh, I don't think there's really too much left in the tank. Maybe 2.5, five more kilos. Just be safe. Don't burn yourself out for deadlifts. You got a long day. Um, let's finish the drill. Go three for three. And start the day off right. Brandon, bam, bam, Dudley. 315 kilo, bam, bam. All business as he approaches the platform. Bam, bam wants to send a message to all the 105 juniors. It's gonna be me. It's gonna be me. Oh. Easy. Six hundred and ninety-four pounds. Does the flare puts it down there? The lights say. Three white lights. <laughs> 
bam, bam. They left him waiting for a second there. I'm telling you, every time, every time the, the lights take a little t time to, to turn on, you just hold your breath. You're just like, no, don't give me those yeah. reds. You're, you're looking around at the judges yeah, like, come, don't, don't do this to me now. now. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. You uh -oh. almost think if you stare at them long enough, they'll just give you the, the green light, right? <laughs> Michael Davis, another Joey Flex disciple in the 105s. Has 322.5 kilos loaded on the bar, 711 pounds already. The 105s uber stacked across the world. Michael would like to add his name to that list. What? Yeah. Oh, looked like his opener. Easy. The horsepower this young man has. And look at, he almost looks, that is what it is. He, he, he's gonna blow it up. I, I, see, I see the little the little sink at the bottom of the hole that he's probably like, hey, he could move a little bit faster, but his third attempt is probably gonna fly like it's supposed to be a first or a second and everything's gonna be right with the world. It, it begs the, you know, the question, is he, should he like go heavier or just take a more conservative? Because at the World Championships. There's gonna be battles in the 105s. There always is. You know, it's, it's gonna be tight. Yeah, I mean, I say, hey, p play the long game. Take what you have today. Don't expend too much energy. You know, don't, don't take off, but you know, do what you have to do. Don't get hurt. Stay, stay healthy and let's get back to training because it's a quick turnaround. You gotta get back to the gym <laughs> early next week, if, if not tomorrow. I think that's solid advice. Andreas Soto, 332.5 kilos, 733 pounds. Had a couple of breakfasts with this young man and he couldn't be nicer. There it is, yep. Let's go. Two to one he gets it. I knew it was it was gonna be on that line. The judges gave it to him. We don't have from the commentary booth the greatest of angles to see, but Two to one, he gets it. Pablo Oliveras, now 332.5 kilos, stays on the bar for him. Again, 733 pounds. <coughs> he handled the weight. He just needs to bring it to proper depth. Yeah. It's just sink a little bit lower, blow it up like he did the last one, and then you, you make the call of what you want to do after that. I, I, I don't think there's going to be any problem at all. Let's see Easy. what they say. Easy. Three white lights. Unquestionable. And you know, this is the learning experience Pablo needs, because I know his, his end goals is likely the world championship for the juniors, mm -hmm. and they're not giving him away there. So this is where, okay, this is the depth I need, especially if you're gonna be traveling with USA across the chest. World juniors will be taking place in Ecuador. Yeah, and I think also just being able to come back from a missed attempt, especially the first one, mentally, you get through that, you're going to be able to go through anything. So it's a, it's a good learning experience to have now, and then nothing else is going to stop you when you travel over to South Africa. Absolutely right. Builds confidence. If it ever happens again, you know, I've been here before and everything's okay. Tristan Naselrod, we're in the 120s, 340 kilos, 750 pounds for a second attempt. Works through it. <laughs> this young man is putting in work today. He's going to need it because Lugo is building his squats as well. It'll be interesting to see what he puts for his third. I'm not sure how much was left after that, but. Who knows, it might be a, a Jamar situation where just the belt was a little bit too low and then you blow it up. <laughs> <and> we've <laughs> seen it, look, record. we've seen people, you're like, ah, he's gotta be close to the limit. Comes back out, 10 keys more, blows it up. Lugo, 347.5 on the bar, 766 pounds. And Lugo and Nasalrod in the midst of a battle 
We got one spot on Team USA for a 120. Who's it going to be? Tyler Stewart as well, but you know what? Look at if we're judging and comparing, and we need to, him and Nazelrod are both getting a little close. Three white lights for Lugo, and this is going to come down to who can complete their third squat, and they're both getting close to that limit, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, look, when it's a close battle, it's just about being as perfect as humanly possible. You've got to force the guys out the hand. You have to force them to not miss lifts. You have to force them to come out of his comfort zone. Um, and I think that, you know, this is just, it's, it's going to be a good battle all the way through. It's going to be fun to watch. Jesus Oliveras, 435 kilo, 960 pounds. Look, the guys back at, uh, back when I was playing football, we always had this saying, with, with names like Jesus, you're, you're built to be a god. You're, you're built to be a, a god amongst men. And so it, well, it's, it's great to see this here. Proof is in the pudding, and you're seeing it right now. 959 pounds, you kidding me? Look at this monster of a man. There we go. The patience. Let the weight settle. Locks it in. <laughs> Look how fast he moves. 435 kilo. Three white lights. He was playing with us. <laughs> this is one of the strongest men in the world in Austin, Texas, doing his thing. Can we see a thousand pounds? I, I don't know. I mean, as a, as a fan, I want to see it. There's, there's Over no under a thousand pounds, Delaney. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. I said, he, he's going to do it. I ah, I got it. I think he's going to do it. It's 50 pounds. He's a big boy. That flew like yeah. it was a, uh, an opening attempt. Um, I think we're going to see it today, and I think it's going to be a huge show. Shoot, I even got my parents to come here just to see it. Yeah, your I said, parents I said, we have Jesus here. You have to get, you have to come down, stop sightseeing for a little bit. <laughs> Trust me, it's worth it. It's a sight to be seen. And James Key <laughs> coming out. He's going to let the clock wind down, but you know what? Get your camera time, James, and pay attention to that young man in the bench press if you want to see some weight shifted capable of going into the 600s and showed up here didn't have anyone handling him Arian Kamesi said young man I got you I'll help load your weights put in your attempts so he's in good hands yeah Amanda Lawrence fresh off of competing takes off the gold medal, picks up the notepad, the attempt sheets, and swaps rolls. I don't gotta tell you, young man, you took off the gold medal. Next day, you're in the booth with me. Yes, sir, yes, sir. All hands on deck, sir. All hands on deck. We're gonna make it a eventful trip. <laughs> Austin, right. Texas, maximize everything. Maximize your time. We even got part of the staff and crew in there weightlifting now at this point. As the clock winds down, and Calvin awaits 280 kilo, kilos, 617 pounds. Calvin Hugo.
five kilo jump. The weight moves well. Let's see what the judges say. Uh, I was I was hesitant. Um, the weight did move well. Looked like it might be a stitch eye. Two to one against him. Strike is there though. Yeah, it was close. You know, in those situations, you just want to get as low as humanly possible. Don't even let it be a coin flip. Don't let it be in the judges' hands. Um, but you know, it happens. This is it. And Nicolas Goodies, 120 kilo class, 305 kilos on the bar for him, 672 pounds. And Nicolas, I believe, is coming out, but we're at 44 seconds. You have 60 seconds to complete a lift. I'm, it sounds like he might be timing out here. Again, with these flights and the way they're moving and the weight that some of these gentlemen are shifting on this flight, you want to give them that one minute grace period and not just X out your lift. Have you ever had to pass on a lift in a competition yet? Uh, no, I, I can't say that I have. I've pr pretty much taken every attempt that I could. Um, so it, it's... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the situation that would put me in that. I, I, guess it w I guess it would be if if your second was a mad grinder, going up on your third for five kilos. If you empty the tank, you still got a dead. You still got a bench, and they're like, you can empty the tank for five kilo, or I could get twenty more out of you on deadlifts and keep your energy. It's one of those deals where it's tough, right? Hundred percent. You right? know, I, I'm one of those people. I look at my coach and I'll say, "Hey, I'll take the five kilos and the 20. Ah, <laughs> that's the champion's <laughs> mentality. Can I have both? Yeah, right. So. Sometimes the athletes are the, are, are the worst coaches, and that's why I don't coach. There you go. Well, that's why. Yeah, that's why you need your handler. Exactly. They take the heart out of it, and they just use their head and say, "Well, Martin, Martin. three seventeen point five. 700 pounds. Look at Martin told me in the back, he's just going to have a little fun. He is so tired. And, uh, well, 700 pounds is fun. We're going to love this. Oh, yeah. He's ready. Ooh. Nice catch by the lifter, by the spotters. So close, so close. Yeah. And he knows it too. Well, here's the thing. I mean, I know for a fact this young man has been working crazy hours, so the guts on him to load up 700 pounds on, my, on his back. He told me in the back room, yeah, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun here. Don't expect too much. Even try to lower the expectations for me in the commentary, if you don't mind. I'm just a guest lifter. My man, you came out the 700 pounds loaded on the bar. <laughs> you know, what can I say? <laughs> it's the athlete mentality right there. It's right. Like you, you, yeah. Sometimes you just can't bridle, bridle the horse, you know? Bam, bam. 320 kilos, 705 pounds. And we haven't had a successful third attempt yet. Can Bam Bam do it? A sea of red. These gentlemen are pushing themselves. Yes, he can. Yes, sir. Think that's good? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The tenacity of this young man. All right, well, if we were wondering, Michael Davis, 327.5 kilos. 722 pounds for his third and final squat attempt, looking to go three for three. No question, he's about to blow this up. The 120s of the world are watching. He's about to send him, our 105s of the world are watching. And he's about to send a message to them. Whoa! Fights through the sticking point. Look, now he smiles. There goes that man. Now he smiles. Finally. <laughs> We have just five spots left of the championship. 
Andreas Soto, 337.5 kilos. We're back in the 120 pluses, that's 744 pounds. I moved well, but it's going to be on that line for the depth call. For sure, for sure. There we go. Up two to one in his favor. Flex fam ends it off good. Look at we started up, four up, and four misses. Now we got a bit of a streak going. Can Tristan Nasalrod continue that streak? 340 kilos was work. Yeah. Five kilo jump. This is five kilos he's going to need because he is in the midst of a battle with Lugo to earn his spot on Team USA as the 120 kilo representative. Five precious kilos he could use towards his total. Let's see what the judges say. Two to oh. one, it's good. Tristan Nasalrod. And that's gonna be extremely important going, going moving forward, the, these next couple of squats, so. Yeah, I mean, Lugo, it puts all the pressure in the world on Lugo, who it also was work for his 347.5. Lugo going up two and a half kilo. I don't know how we get, ah, oh, I got gotcha. you. They're gonna walk away from it. And uh, stay, keep the energy in the tank. I can tell you right now, stats from not long ago was if you miss your third squat, 67% chance you're gonna miss your third deadlift. If you think your second squat was flying close to the sun, don't risk it for two and a half kilo, five kilo, because if you miss your third, the likelihood of missing your third deadlift goes way up. Not a bad move, uh, Joey Flex handling that young man. And the battle continues. So Tristan Nasalrod goes three for three. Lugo goes two for two, opting not to come out for his third. Gonna be interesting to see what they do in the, in the bench and the deadlifts. It's gonna be tight. Yeah, it's absolutely gonna be tight, and I had no clue about this. Really 67%? 67% failure rate if you fail your third squat. Keep that in mind when you're battling for those five nice. extra kilos, young man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These are the stats a guy like Matt Gary will toss at you over a conversation over copies. Okay, so out in South Africa, I'm going to have you in the back feeding some information That's in there yeah. just in case you, based on the stats. If you run into Matt Gary, pick his brain, believe me. 357.5 being loaded on the bar for Pablo Oliveras, we're back in the 120 plus class. <laughs> this crowd is all behind the Oliveras brothers. And why wouldn't you be when you shift this kind of weight and put on a show like this, you're gonna gather some fans. Had a small hiccup on the opener, retook it. Let's see how he handles his third. Whoa. <laughs> the power Easy. is there. Easy. Well, the judges like the depth. Easy. Three by lights. Look at him getting <laughs> celebration with the crowd. Might be his parents. Flex fam. Oh, there's Pablo basking in the applause. If you were a 120 kilo junior, you got a problem rising up from Texas. Now amping up his brother. 450 kilos, 
992 pounds. Just shy of a G. Ah. Just shy of a G. I would have lost Pablo. In his big brother's ear. Talk about footsteps to be following him. Look at this man approaching the bar. How do you not get goosebumps? The crowd is literally on their feet right now. People are pouring in from outside. Yeah, people are coming in. I mean, hotel staff has now started to enter. Pay-per-view right here. <laughs> 450 kilos. Oh, let's see what the judges say. Three white lights. Oh my God. Jesus, all the Ferris is on fire today. The strongest man in the IPF. And the crowd, you can feel the electricity in the room right now. There's the nothing super, like it. The super heavyweight champion of the world applying his trade. Oh, there, there, wow. There's absolutely nothing like it. Just raw power. Listen, tuning in, you weren't sure what you were going to get. If people were going to be holding back, it didn't look like it from what we saw. I think he might have a little more in the tank, but we still got one heck of a show. If this is him running at RPE 9, what is his RPE 10 at this point? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I, uh, He'll be going over 1,000 pounds at thousand, Worlds. 1,000 pounds easy. Thousand, it's just how, how far over. How far over is the question at this point? It's not It's not if it's a 1,000, it's just how far. And that's what it is. It's This young man has an opportunity. I mean, he was breaking junior world records when he's a junior, won the Open World Championship as a junior. Just now, if you could put this in perspective, this is his first year that he's in the Open. And look at the type of numbers that he's shifting. It's almost, it's insane to wrap your head around. And then you think about Pablo, his younger brother, coming up behind him. Obviously now earning a spot conceivably on the junior world team. This is for spots in the open world team, but likely to go to the junior world championships in Ecuador. Um, I mean, it's exciting to see the rest of the year. It's a preview, it's a taste of what's to come. And then we have the battle of the 120s with Tristan Nazarod netting three squats and his Lugo opting to not come out for his third. It's gonna be interesting storyline. Because as the kilos start to add up, hopefully he doesn't look back and like, oh, wow, should I have battled for a few more? Easy to have 2020 hindsight, but it's a storyline to keep in mind nevertheless. And then the 105s, Michael Davis going three for three, ending off with a 327.5 kilo squat. Michael Davis sending a message to the rest of the 105s, and the 105s are stacked globally. Um, last year, Anatoly won the 105s and was the best lifter of the entire World Championships to win the 105s. That is the level of expectation. Michael Davis meeting that level. And we have Joey Flex here with us. We're going to do a little bit of an interview here. Joey, if you don't mind, Delaney, if you could give Joey that headset. We're going to do a little tag out here. Oh, snap. My snap. man, Joey. Oh, my snap. Lord. Um, I, I wasn't sure if, 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 oh, sorry, sir. I wasn't sure if Jesus is going to be holding back or not, but what are we looking at here? What is happening with the Flex fam here today? Um, I really believe that this, you know, federation is allowing us to kind of start from scratch, basically, right? Yeah. And really just take everything to another level. I really, I really, really believe that. I promise you next year at this meet, the the attendance is going to be so much bigger. And I, I really do believe that personally. I take it personal. Oh. That, like, I have a hand in this. Oh, like, hey. I need to, I need to, I want everyone to win. I want every federation to win. And I believe to do that, you just need to, you need to keep pushing the limits. You need to keep, you know, you need to take it to that next level, that world level, the level beyond the world level. You know what right. I'm saying? We need to make noise. We need to just be compelling. 
the word compelling is something I've been like focusing on right lately, and I'm like, yo, what is compelling? A 990 squat That's by a young man by any measure. is compelling. Yes. You know what I mean? And I just, I just really feel like, um, you know, obviously, like you see the rosters, like <laughs> at Flex Boys, right? And I'm like, you know what? We have an opportunity here to really, you know, take it into our hands, and and the the things that we can do by pushing Powerlifting America IPF. Obviously, you know, we support everything i really i really do believe that like i'm kind of like in the middle and i'm like yo i gotta i have we could do great things right now i could do we could push powerlifting to that next level or i could just you know be complacent and i don't want to be complacent i want to i want to keep i want to keep pushing it higher you know what i mean i do and speaking of how excited were you for the announcement of sheffield the importance of powerlifting american mats rose when that happened obviously the world championships is the ticket to Sheffield, and what did that mean to you and your athletes when you seen that announcement? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, obviously the prior worlds, we had a pretty good roster over there, and you know, some of our lifters wanted to stay because they're just kind of burnt out on traveling and things like that, and the schedule and stuff. Some of them uh, wanted to stay and continue to pursue the world level in Sheffield, and I knew, you know, when Sheffield was first announced. Um, I, I had access to like I could see the tickets right like 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 people buying tickets over time because yeah. like we get like guest tickets or whatever and and I saw the stadium and I saw them fill up yeah. and so many Europeans were like hey man I'm traveling to come see this meet I, I can't wait to meet you today this and that and it was such a it was su I mean, there's nothing in powerlifting that's ever been like that you know what I mean where you literally feel like it's 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 a sport it's like a it's, you know what i mean like I, people are traveling to spectate powerlifting the hardest thing to do is to be yeah. powerlifting a spectator sport and then we're doing it and that and i just kind of knew um you know that this is this can be something and i just want to go full force into it and i and i really believe that um if this pops off if we do right right if we the Europeans that are watching this are going to see our see our boys, and when we go to Worlds, they're going to be on point. They're going to be on another level. They are going to bring the best out of us, and we are going to have this level of lifting that the world has never seen. And then beyond that, the best of the best in the world are going to compete at the ultimate powerlifting tournament for a lot, and it's going to be insane. The ultimate prize. Is that not compelling? Come on, man. Uh, you like, can't no bigger. Um, that's a beautiful setup. There's levels of greatness. The world championships become a world champion is great. Imagine Sheffield on top of that. It's going to be absolutely insane. And I, f and I truly believe it's going to, others will see that and say, you know, I want to support this. We want to we wanna elevate the sport as a whole. We want to provide events. Like maybe the, I, I am confident that all the production here, you know, Powerlifting America, SBD, all of them, the IPF, they can, they can really do something that has not been done before and just blow this powerlifting thing into the next level you know what i mean and that's just that's what keep that's what fires me up that's why that's why i get up you know out of bed and i'm like you know people are like joe you've done this you've gone to worlds and da, 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 and i'm like what 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 is there more like what it, this this gets me up like oh we got something new <laughs> something bigger bigger and better yeah. let's do it so you know i am um, i'm just i'm just happy to be here i'm happy that i have the team of guys that i have and i'm just excited to continue to build and you know invest in the sport and and just see people grow and you know let's talk about his just a squat for a minute what he did i remember when i met him and i i rarely do this and i just said you know we were very far away from being a world champion at the time and i was like you know what, man if we put our head down and we work hard like who knows like you might be next that you might be up there one day you know what i mean and yeah. in a very short time you know we got along everything popped off and you know a world champion as a junior i mean come on man yeah. we were we were fired up for you know obviously ray couldn't couldn't make it we were so like excited to i can't even believe that that little joey flex right back in the day i knew about ray williams and i was like yo man this guy is insane he's like this juggernaut and i and and little did i know that i would go down this path that would lead me to sort of cultivate this community and inherit some of these lifters and build them up and give them give them you know a chance to to be in the conversation with somebody like that you know what i mean and it's just been um i y you got to believe of course you have to believe in yourself you have to just like if i didn't think i could do it i wouldn't you know and and in the beginning there's like i remember when you brought me on and we did that q a uh i think it was for the ipf and you know there <laughs> it was like you know at that time i i only had john hack winning worlds and i could have just fizzled out after that but I continue to show up year after year, producing athletes, you know, continuing to um, 
uh, like, you know, a lot of those big names in the IPF are what really, like, motivated us. You know what I mean? We need the Brett Gibbs. We need, you know, the Anatolies. We need the guys up there that really, the Ray Williams, like, we need those big names. And I think, um, you know, I mean, my, my Flex Girls are looking at Team France because they've been uh, popping off. We and we've been, and we've been like, man, that's, that's, we got work to do. Like, that is, that is, um, that's what I, that's what I want to go after. Those are, those are the lifters that really fire us up uh, because I mean obviously America is super talented we have a lot of stuff here and we need to kind of venture out to other the w we're th there's a lot of world level lifters here you know what I mean and we need that we need those compelling matchups um, I think it's so it's so cool that like you know Keiko for example he can meet a, he can go against a lifter from Sweden and they don't even like they completely different like setting of being brought up but they have a, a common um, you know, just interest, which is lifting, and they can relate on that level, and they're the other side of the planet, you know what I mean? Right. It's so awesome, and there's so much respect there. It's so much, like, camaraderie and, like, like yo, wow, you really brought out the best of me, you know what I mean? Because you because you were up there, and I think and I think it goes both ways, you know? We're, we see those world lifters, a lot of people see us, and, and um, you know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to create opportunities for people. Like, I realize the biggest impact I can make on lifting is – um, you know, being the best coach and mentor and guide that I can be to these guys. And, and through that, um, I think we're really going to be able to just, like I said, man, just bring quality lifting and bring um, just another level of just execution and, you know, just push everything to the next level, man. That's all you, I want to do. You, you had mentioned um, Jonathan Keiko. I'd yeah. be remiss if I didn't ask you, oh, my gosh, man, this guy, first off, Cannot get himself an easy win. Always I know, man. Battle. Everybody, every time it's like someone new. <laughs> it's it's always somebody new. On top of that, um, he's starting to get the name Mr. Perfect. This guy is now 27 for 27. And, really? Uh, I didn't yeah. even know that. <laughs> In battles. We just focus on one at a time. Gavin Eden, Gustav Hedlund, yeah. Chance Mitchell, Jonathan Keiko, it, it is literally, a, he's turned into Mr. Perfect. Yeah, even, you know, Charlie Dixon before that, and what people don't know is I think for two years in a row at Nationals, we came in fourth. Um, and the year before that, he wouldn't even have made prime time. Right. You know what I mean? But when you get to know somebody really well on a level that is beyond just X's and O's, and they work hard, and, you know, they trust you. That's the number one thing is trust, man. They've had many conversations with me talking about trust, and, you know, the the trust allows them to execute and it allows me to like be the be the best at what I'm doing and then he can be the lifter doing his thing and then over time it gets a little better and 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 then you get just nine for nines, nine for nines, nine for nines, nine for nines. And and, and the crazy th what, what what was so good about this meet is I think he had a little bit more on squat. He definitely had more on bench. And he had a little bit more on deadlift. And and usually, like, these last two f battles, we had to, like, go all, you know, we yeah. had to, like, send it. And it was hard because we were competing, and then, w and then we had to get ready right away for another meet, and then we had to get ready for another away for another meet. And it's just, you know, and then now we got, we got like, 11, 10 weeks, something like that. We got another one. The 93s are going to be insane at Worlds. There's a lot of competition. It's going to be huge. And then after that, you know, if everything works out for us, um, we'll finally have like you know a good ten months to, to get ready for the big one. So, and then I I, I also want to ask you real quick if you don't mind about uh, and, and, or do you have to go because I know you got to warn people. We'll go to the last question. Last question. Okay, Michael <laughs> Davis. I, I gotta say, how proud are you this this young man. man? He looks like a possible future contender at the World Championships. Yeah. Mikey is uh, he's one of those guys like Keiko who's been with me for a really long time. Um, I think he has tremendous poten potential, you know, phenomenal lifter. We have had a little bit of injuries here and there, um, but we are getting through them. And, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but that squat wasn't an RPE 11, you know, <laughs> wasn't a super max. He's usually like yeah. we're just like barely making it, right, um, right. you know. So, you know, I think there's just a couple little things with the cut to kind of tweak and just, and, and just a little stuff in training, and he's going to be great. But, you know, right now, um, I'm very proud of Mikey. You know, he's he's one of my boys, and and I uh, I just want to I I literally when this opportunity presented itself, I said, I need this guy to get to Worlds, and I need to do everything in my power to help get him a World Title. I know it's going to be tough because there's some beasts in the 105 class, um, but that's what's going to motivate us to to bring our absolute best. And I think, you know, I think my, I totally believe in Mikey. And it's crazy because if you don't believe in the uh, in the Jesuses and the Keikos and the Mikeys, right, and the Amandas and the Russes and everything, right, if you don't believe in them. You don't have a shot to even fit those shoes. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. got to create this future version of yourself that's 
you know, where you kind of want to be or where you want to go, and you have to, like, you have to put everything, everything about your being has to, like, get you moving in that direction. Um, and some of those goals are, they're very insurmountable. They're like, wow, like I said, like, whoa, Ray Williams, man, I'm, how will I ever get a lifter to beat him? Um, and and you just got to believe that you can and try and move in that direction. And um, if there's one way to win the game, there's one way, and you got to run like seven different plays, and you need a little bit of luck on some of them. You also got to get an onside kick. You have to pursue that path, and hopefully it'll work out for you. You might make it halfway. You might make it, uh, you know, almost to the end, and then lose it, lose the last one. But you know, eventually you can get there if you if you commit. Listen, let me just end it off with this. 2016, you said we did that Q&A. It's been a long time since then. I could not be prouder, sir. Thank you, you man. Hard. Could it means not be a lot. Prouder. I'm glad it means you're a lot. here. Already. Am I think I'm tagging out? Am I tagging out for Keiko now? <laughs> I think we, we chewed up inside. We'll have All right, to no worries. Later. Anyway, love you guys. Bye. Thank you, sir. And don't. back in the bench press event for the 105s, the 120s, and the 120 pluses. Six pack lap it at, and I'm joined in the booth by a newly crowned 83 kilo champ, Delaney Wallace, who is, I mean, prep starts already for the world championships, doesn't it, young man? It starts tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We're already in prep. And uh, Joey Flex came on after the squad event had finished. And man, he got me all riled up for the World Championships in Sheffield. Yeah, Joe, Joey just has unmatchable energy when it comes to the sport. Every day, every training session, every voice note he sends over, you, you can tell he just loves it all. Yeah, yeah you can feel it. 165 kilos. Calvin Hugo. We're in the 120 kilo class. This is 363 pounds. Looks like he's actually opening up with a with a PR. Wow, and and ten kilo over his PR, so confident. Training must be going well. Easy. Yeah, wow. Just smashed his old personal <laughs> best. <laughs> and this is where scouting reports. You ever in a competition sometimes totally throw you off if you open up open power lifting and try to do some scouting just based off of numbers. Bam, bam, Dudley, 172.5 kilos, 380 pounds for his bench opener. And that bar is loaded for Brandon Dudley. Bam, bam, went three for three in the squats. Amongst the 105 kilo class juniors, he's at the top of the food chain. He'd like to add a world title to his accolades. And that's why he's here. It looks smooth to me. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, easy. No problem there. Expect a pretty big jump for the second. Yeah, get yourself on the board. It's just the openers. This is not the time to gamble. You just want to hit something that you would hit any day of the week for multiple reps. Andreas Soto, 175 kilo on the bar for him. 
85 pounds. Match for a personal best opener. Ah. A lot of PRs in, you the, know, in the beginning, open it up. Yeah, it's like, okay, if you've hit it several times in the gym, it is what it is, but it makes me nervous because I would be opening with a PR. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, if it's like Calvin, you might as well. And it is. Okay. There you go. <laughs> that was an opener, so bench training must have been going good. Pablo Oliveras, 190 kilos, 419 pounds. The Oliveras brothers really putting on a show for the crowd here today. And yeah, you want to go over your liftoff. Make sure that the spotters and loaders get the lift off how you want it. Um, some people even take no lift off, so that's consistent with training. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, sometimes a bad lift off can mess you up. Uh, there are times in the gym there's only one person there, and they just yank the bar and throw it on top <laughs> of you, and all of a sudden you're like, you have a come to Jesus moment. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you quickly become a religious man. Yeah, <laughs> and he does it easy. Three white lights, of course, the downside. Um, if you train without liftoff, that's fine. But if you have a very aggressive setup, um, sometimes it's hard to maintain that if you don't get a liftoff. However, you do get the consistency, like you said. So it's a dicey proposition. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's just it's all personal preference. Um, also, I guess it's the gym atmosphere, too. There's just some gyms that you just don't can't rely on many people to give you that liftoff, so you just get used to it. and. It just becomes a part of your routine. <laughs> I tell you what, somebody who has reliable training partners, Michael Davis, in the 105s, opening with 205 kilos, 551 pounds. Easy, easy. Three white lights. By far one of my favorite lifters. Yeah, you know, this is kind of like his squats. No smiles, all business, until he hit his third. He's like, now I'll allow myself to celebrate. Um, oh, and an update on our friend Martin. Now I talked to him in the back, and he's like, now, nah, well, new game plan, we're going YOLO. So <laughs> expect some fireworks. 210 kilo loaded on the bar for his kilos for his opening bench, 462 pounds. I got a feeling when SBD packs up, he's carrying most of the heavy equipment. <laughs> Nicely Easy. done. Three white lights. And it's funny, I, I, I had a sneaking suspicion that at the second that first squat flew, <laughs> it was, it, 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 that that yeah. game plan, uh, I'm just here to have fun goes yeah, away that's real quickly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I've, okay. I've been there, done that. <laughs> no, I, we know too many power lifters do a bit <laughs> on that. All right. Oh, yeah, you know, RP six day, all of a sudden yeah. you got nines, tens. <laughs> Tristan Nasalrod. We're back in the 120s. 210 kilo, 462 pounds. Tristan in the middle of a super close showdown with Lugo. Tristan would love to make it to the IPF World Championships. He's going to need to get some benches in. This is the first step. See how this opener moves. That's a powerful man. And I think this is where there's a game of inches, you know. So when it's the opponent didn't take that third that third slot, having that slightly smaller opener on the bench gives them that wiggle room and gives them a little bit more confidence. And now the pressure goes on to Lugo, opposed to him. 
And speaking of Lugo, 220 kilos, 485 pounds for his bench opener. Lugo had at one point obviously I'm running king of the lifts and he had dipped into my DMs and told me you're going to hear about me in 2022 and I tell you what it didn't take long just a few weeks later here we are and I'm already impressed <laughs> Fast off the chest, a little bit of work at the lockout, but he gets three white lights. You know, you gotta be careful now, um, unless this is the way he always benches, and it always slows down around lockout, fair play. It's hard to tell some of these lifters. You know, you might see him like, wow, that slowed down at lockout, but perhaps it always slows down at lockout, and that's the same for him. Yeah, bench is always one of those tough ones where, you know, you have a guy that from 135 all the way up to 500, it looks the same, and then you have somebody that everything flies, and then you put half a kilo on, and they just fall apart at the seams. So right. it's going to be interesting to see, again, game of inches for him. Nicolas taking 220 kilos himself, <laughs> making easy work of it. Nicolas Goodies. And here is the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Jesus Oliveras, 240 kilos, 529 pounds for his bench press opener. May the games begin. This man will bench press your deadlift <laughs> for an opener. The whole room gets a whole lot humbler when Jesus enters it. Going over the lift off he wants, and that's always a good idea. Wow, that was 529 pounds? That was an empty bar. <laughs> oh, wow. Jesus Oliveras showing why he is the strongest man in the IPF today. And Arian Messi Kamesi going over some last minute talk with James Key. James Key opening with 247.5 keys. That's 545 pounds as an opener. I, I'll tell you what, I was sitting on the uh, the couch with him a couple of days ago, <laughs> getting ready for the meet, and you know, he's talking about, hey, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to chase a record for the bench. I said, what, what are you trying to hit? Just uh, underestimate for me. He said 550. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you're sitting on the couch. You look over. You might have mistaken him for a love seat. This man is monstrous. Whoa. Oh, my God. He just Three white lights <laughs> evaporates 245 kilos. He reminds me of James Harrison. That, yeah. that, that just strong James Harrison vibe. And you know what? When he presses, like Ray Williams, he looks over to his right, which is interesting. I don't know if he just did that right there, and he doesn't do it regularly, but he's got the Ray Williams head look to the right. Shades of greatness in James Key. Man, we're getting some big lifts here today in this session. Calvin Hugo back in the 120s. He's got 170 kilos, 374 pounds, being handled by the great Amanda Lawrence. 
you got this many flex athletes. I guess everybody's got to kind of pitch in to try to handle and help out. Yeah, 100%. We just, you know, full rotation. Whoever's competing the next day, we make sure that uh, they're all set and we help out and handle all three. Nice press. And he's... And they're two for two. Bam, bam, Dudley. 180 kilos. Three hundred and ninety six pounds. Three ninety six to Dudleyville. Uh oh, the hips are rising. Uh. Almost a personal best right there. He's got one more shot though. And it's, so that's where A, the first bench he got in, very important that he nailed that. Seven and a half kilo, I mean it's a decent jump on bench, but he's a, the, this is the 105, so it's not a unreasonable jump. But does he come out again, try to empty the tank, or how close does he feel he was? Can he make the adjustments? Conversation they have to have in the back room. And Andre Soto, 120 kilo plus, 182.5 kilos on the bar, 402 in pounds. Another seven and a half kilo jump. What kind of jumps do you like on your bench press, Delaney? I, I guess it depends on how far how far you are. I'm bench, I'm a little bit more conservative with my jumps. You know, squat and deadlift. I don't I don't mind jumping. You know, reds and and, and blues. Um, bench is always tough. And Especially going back to Dudley, eh, missing the second attempt. I think it depends. It, it was it a strength thing or was it a technique thing? Because sometimes, if it's a technique thing, we can lock it in. But if it's a strength thing, maybe you just scratch the third. Don't 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 even use the energy because typically you can't really grind out the bench the same way you grind out a squat or a deadlift. Well said, sir. And Soto also missing his second attempt. Pablo Oliveras looking to get back on track. The gentleman in this flight put some more green on the scoreboard. We're in the second round of benches and already got two failures. If you thought these gentlemen would be holding back, guess again. Another 12 and a half kilos jump. It's also a five kilo PR. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, he's a young man, so the rate of progression is probably quick. It's going to fly. 190 definitely did. Oh, slows. Oh. And another no lift. And in the second attempts for bench press, we have three no lifts in a row. And we are still in the second attempts with another round to go. Yeah, I think that goes back to what we were saying before. Sometimes with bench, it's hard. Something will fly, you add a couple more kilos, and then. Obviously, it's a totally different ball game. You we're feel the weight a little bit more on bench. We're seeing it proven right now. And Michael Davis, 215, 474 pounds. Can Michael Davis right the ship? He's perfect so far. Yep. A 10 kilo jump. Self lift off. Back on track. Back on track. You can always count on Mikey. <laughs> always count on Mikey. You can always count on Mikey. And Tristan Naselrod is up next. 215 kilos will stay on the bar for Tristan. 
We are in the 120 kilo class. Tristan piecing together his total and with every successful attempt gets one step closer to his goal of making it onto Team USA. Oh, battles through the sticking point. Do the judges like it? Two to one they do. You know, he got it. I don't know how many more kilos they want to put on that though. Yeah, I don't think there's much left. I actually thought he almost jumped the, uh, the press command. So I, 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 maybe 2.5 or maybe we just take call it a day and save it for deads and finish it off. Yeah, you know what, it's, yeah, exactly. For 2.5, how much do you want to take away, take out of the bank that you're saving up for on your deadlift? Martin, so anxious, he needs to be held back. He wants to get out that bar, 220 kilos, 485 pounds. 10 kilos jump. And do you happen to know this young man's personal best on bench? Oh. Yeah, it looks like a 20 kilo PR right there. Sticks it out at the top. It was work though. Three white lights. It was, it was work, but I think I think he can squeeze out another 2.5 to 5 kilos. I think he will do it too. You know, he said, I'm going to enter as a guest lifter. Didn't want any pressure on himself. He might as well have just entered a full on in the, in the national rankings because he's putting on a show today. And Lugo, 225 kilos on the bar for his second attempt. 496 pounds, and that is Matt Gary over his shoulder now. When did that happen? <laughs> uh, what is going on here? Matt Gary, arm crossed and has taken a hold of the wheel for Lugo. If you're in a battle, he's he's a good general to have. And Lugo's trying to put this away. If he can make this move, he's going to be in a really good position going into deadlifts. It's funny, you're at a big competition like this, you see some legendary handlers, and you just get lucky. You're like, sir, I'll buy you dinner if you handle me in this this afternoon. There it is. I think, I think this is big, assuming the three white lights. I think this is big because he's already in first. Mm. Opening up a little bit higher on deadlifts as well. This is just a good way for him to put some nail in the coffin. You know, looking at, you know, looking at Tristan. I don't think there was too much left on the bench. Will he be able to really pull for for, for third on the deadlifts, or will he kind of just make that gap grow? It'll it'll really depend on Lugo staying in the pocket and not missing too many lifts. We've seen windows of opportunity open. When that happens, Nikolas with 225 kilos on the bar for his second attempt. But he's locks it out. He presses it out. The Three white lights. Yeah, it's uh, you're right. If I was obviously on the podcast, I had picked Lugo, but there's a lot of lifting left to go. Mm. I, I his chances could only increase when you grab a Matt Gary in the back somehow. <laughs> yeah, I guess a, a good snake will go a long way, right? Yeah, you put out the bat symbol and, and signal and all of a sudden, bam, Matt Gary shows up in the warm-up room. I think you summoned me, young man. 250 kilos on the bar for Jesus Oliveras. 551 pounds. And the way he handled 240 kilos, I'm expecting this to fly off this young man's chest. Oh, smokes. 
Jesus Olivares. Three white lights. And this is Jesus on cruise control with minimal amping. You know, the adrenaline low. Look how he struts off as though he's walking his dog. And that's only 2.5 under his best. So it, there's only, only God knows what's left in the tank when it comes to bench. And I, I don't know if we're going to see it today, but yep. it, it'll be cool to see it we in the upcoming weeks. Now, we had said James Key was capable of 600 plus. Here is 272.5 kilos, 601 pounds. So a little birdie told me he's good for seven. So we might see. That's a, that would be a, a, a hundred pound jump. I don't know. A little birdie told me he's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's good for seven if he wants to go get it. But he's going to be able to use it today. A race for Bench Worlds. Yeah, you're we'll right. See. He might keep it holstered for Bench Worlds. Man, does he have some pressing power on him. Three white lights, and that pressing power on this man, I don't know where the ceiling is, but we're not close to it yet. He might be good for seven. We're <laughs> not close to it yet. Yeah, That's I don't know. man. Seven certainly isn't unrealistic. Don't know if he's going to load it today. You're right. Worlds might be the place. Keep it. Keep it in the back pocket for now. But it's certainly, a, if that's a preview of what to come, you might want to watch Bench Worlds. <laughs> might be the first one I see. <laughs> Calvin Hugo, 175 kilos, 385 pounds. I got told by a producer this is actually Amanda Lawrence's significant other. Oh, brakes come on. Nope, brakes it off. Barely missed it. That's a very positive way of looking at it, young man. Barely missed it. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Brandon Bam Bam Dudley retaking 180, but I think with this camera angle, every time we got it previously, it means he's probably letting the clock wind down for his fellow competitors. I actually will say, I think Bam Bam's making the right decision here. 180 looked like it just wasn't gonna happen today. No sense emptying the tank if you hit it, it's seven and a half kilo, but you still got a deadlift. Bam Bam's got a big deadlift on him. He can cover a lot of ground. So you only have so much in the budget. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I was expecting. If it's a strength issue, on uh, um, bench, there's really much, not much grinding that out and just pushing it through. And all you're going to do is just tie yourself out, you know, hurt your lats, hurt your shoulders, you know, put undue stress and take a little bit off the deadlift. If he's got a big deadlift, then, you know, let that weapon fly when it has to. And to his credit, too, the 180 he failed, he gave it. You know, he gave, yeah. he gave it a, a, a real shot and unloaded the tank trying to finish it. So it looks like he's just going to end up tying his personal best for the moment. Probably was good for 2.5 kilos more. Yeah, you, yeah um, you're right, if he's a little more conservative. Hindsight 2020, he's really going to jump 2.5 kilos after the first. And Joey Flex Disciple, Andreas Soto, has 182.5 kilos for his third and final. He missed this on his second. Personal best right here. See if you can make this through. Gets the hand off. Oh, wow. You got it. Yeah, there's a sticking point. The bar is allowed to stop. It can't return back to the chest at all. Oh. Nope. And um, we can't see from this angle, you know, the, if the butt came up, a foot came mm -hmm. up, or whatnot. Um, sometimes when you see a sticking point, sometimes to break through, your butt comes up or yeah. a foot moves. Couldn't really see it, so I'm assuming it's got to be one of those infractions. Maybe a little downward motion. Maybe a little downward mm -hmm. motion, but Joey Flex doing his job here. If you get one white, you're allowed to approach the jury. Mm -hmm. um, so Joey Flex, is the handler, can approach the jury, ask 
Are you guys, can you guys review it? Can it get overturned? I'll ask my producers if it does get overturned, if they keep me abreast of that. And Pablo Oliveras looking to retake 202.5 kilos. And there's the angle where you see the butt has to keep contact with the bench. One cheek can come up. Wow. Dumb. Makes you wonder what happened with the previous. Three white lights. And there is a story of miss, come out, hit it. Didn't have to empty the tank to do it. It's actually relatively smooth. Absolutely. I, th I think the last one was just a technical issue. He was able to come back and right the wrong and get a five kilo PR in the process. He has made two victories thus far. Far is denoted. And uh, my producer's just telling me that um, they did not actually protest, they're just act asking what the infraction was. Got it confirmed and maybe Joey Fleck said, yep, fair enough, we'll leave it, we'll let it ride. Thank you, Pete, and up next, it looks like Tristan Nasalrod will opt not to come out for his third bench press, which is interesting. Tristan Nasalrod is going head to head with Lugo for the 120 kilo title. Lugo opted to not come out for his third squat. Nasalrod now opting not to come out for his third bench. They both know this is gonna be decided in the deads. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, especially since it seems as though Lugo has the higher deadlift. So it's like, uh, why, why, not, you know, yeah, why not go and try to get the kilo where you can so then we can jock for a little bit of better position now that you're trailing. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes in the camp, so I, you know, I'm just playing Sunday night quarterback, right, or Monday night quarterback. You're right. Well, see what happens. It, and that's true, and that's what the previous numbers anyways would indicate. Perhaps Tristan Nasalrod's hoping, I got to stay tight enough. I need him to miss some lifts. Otherwise... I could just do my best. Or maybe he's pulling a me. He's got a few PRs in the tank that yeah. he, didn't, he didn't let us see. <laughs> he could always shock us all. We're going to eat our words. Michael Davis, 225 kilos on the bar, 485 pounds for his third and final bench, five kilo jump from his second. Oh, nicely done. You know what? Looks like he might have a couple more kilos in the tank, but he's happy with it. What is his previous PR, by the way? Uh, that he actually just matched it right here. So I think the game plan was, I think the game plan was just to come in, cruise control, not get hurt, save it up for the big day later on. Uh, no need to strain yourself too much now. Yeah, so his previous PR is 220 kilos. So obviously, the way he just handled 220 kilos, he's passed his PR, but I think mm -hmm. you're right. Let's not go for that new PR. Not yet. You'll probably need it at Worlds. And look at Martin. Looks like he's having the time of his life up there. All smiles. All of a sudden, the, the switch just got flipped, and my man got all business as soon as he turned the corner. 227.5 kilos into the 500 pound range. Look at this man loaded up 700 on the squat, 500 on the bench. He shouldn't be a guest lifter. He should, <laughs> he should, he should just not have been up. a guest lifter. <laughs> he should have just signed up. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to talk to him about his confidence later. Either that or let me borrow his bench press. Yeah. I'm going to need it. <laughs> That's right. Now he's down to 15 seconds. Plenty of time. Whoa. No. Just a little too much. A little too much. But I tell you what, Martin's putting on a show nonetheless. Raise the bar to 570 pounds. Enrique Lugo is next up. 230 kilos being loaded for Lugo. We're back in the 120s. There's classic arms crossed Matt Gary pose. If Joey Flex has his classic pose, Matt Gary has his as well with the arms crossed. 
Yes, sir. Spot him, spot him on the other side of a barbecue any day. And Lugo looking to pick up five kilo and just increase that lead on Tristan Nasalrod. Really wants to, when you got a lead and you're, and you're the bigger deadlifter, you want to take away the hope of who's trying to chase you. Yeah, you, you have to put the nail in the coffin. You have to make your opponent just overthink and, 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 and second guess. And especially in a strength sport, if you're not mentally there, the weight is unforgiving. <laughs> so you, you have to be, make sure that you're 100%. See what happens here. 230 kilos. Oh, oh, 507 pounds. And it's good. Lugo is turning into a monster here at the Powerlifting America Nationals. We have a serious threat for the 120 kilo world title. Staying in the 120s, Nicolas Goodies with 230 kilos remaining on the bar. Oh, a little too much for him today. Listen, there was a lot of hype on Lugo coming into this. You know, a lot of, I, we were hyping him obviously on the King List podcast. Mm. He is living up to that hype on this platform today. And talk about living up to hype, perfect segue. Jesus Oliveras, 257.5 kilos, 567 pounds, a seven and a half kilo jump from his second attempt. And what is his previous personal best, Delaney, if you don't mind me asking you? Uh, 252.5, so this will be a five kilo PR right here. So he is not holding back, sir. Something tells me he's still holding back. I still think <laughs> yeah, you, but you might be right. I still think there's more in the tank. Listen, it might be a PR for the platform, but he might have moved past that in training. Let's see how it moves. Oh, nice press. All types of pressing power by Jesus Oliveras. There you go. Walking through a perfect six for six after the bench press event. And it is rare anybody lifts after Jesus Oliveras. That's how special James Key is. 282.5 kilo, 622 pounds. Arian Messi Kamesi handling James. This is the bench all time record. This is the bench American record. The bench American record. And the world record. Well, there won't be a world record of uh, uh, 291, and uh, nah. but still, uh, it just gives you a little perspective for within 10 kilo of it. Oh, whoa! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Oh, and you know what? Oh. That's probably the right call. That well, that was the right call, but. I wonder if Arian might protest. She's got a white. Look at it, it was untidy. It was also heroic. It was also phenomenal. If you like to see heart in a fight and a lift, you got it. But it was a little bit shaky. Yeah, it was a little bit shaky. I mean, the, the crazy part for me is he is using absolutely no leg drive. He is just laying down on the bench, letting letting it fall on his chest, and just saying, "I'm just going to muscle this up." So I think. Once he gets a little bit of technique in there, just a little bit, that's going to fly. That, that, that record's going to fall very, very, very soon. Listen, all of the world-class coaches that are in the warm-up room right now, one of you please approach that young man and show him, you know, it doesn't take a lot of tweaking because the sky is the limit. The type of par pressing power he has, oh, my goodness. And how about Michael Davis? There's a reason he's my favorite lifter. He, yeah. he's, he's just, he's, he's doing what he came here to do. 
just being methodical. Um, I can't wait to see him in the next couple of weeks or next few weeks really, really take off and, and do what he has to do. And look, I, I'll, I'll never bet against him. Six for six, also six for six, reigning 120 plus world champion Jesus Oliveras uh, gave us a 450 kilos squat, a 257.5 kilos bench. What do you think we can expect in the deadlifts? Will he take us into the 800s? Will he go close to 400 kilo? What are your thoughts? I think for the deadlifts, I think that it's just going to play it safe. You know, RPE 7, 7.5 kind of day. I don't think we're going to see too much. Deadlifts take a little bit more out of you than I think anything else, especially for the bigger guys. Um, I think we're just going to play it, play it safe, um, get ready for Worlds, and I think he's going to blow things up later on. We'll have to stay tuned and see because him playing it safe in the squats was 992 pounds. So <laughs> even his playing it safe weights is weights you can't miss. And on that note, we will see you in just shy of 19 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Lap it at. I am accompanied in the booth today, none other than 83 kilo sensation Delaney Wallace. Thank you for joining me again, my man. Awesome. Th thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Seeing a lot of big weights get thrown around, and still a lot more to go. Yeah, <laughs> here's the thing the bar has hit the ground, and the deadlift session is about to begin for an opener. We have 355 kilos by Jesus Oliveras. And we might see an unofficial world record attempt by Jesus, if we're lucky. James Key will take a token deadlift here. He came for the bench press. Look at the size of James Key. He told me, uh, before I leave, I want to get a picture with you. I'm like, my friend? I'm gonna be severely humbled. It'll be like you're standing with your, your son, but I'll take it. I'll take it. 220 kilos for Martin. Eggos. Martin all smiles when he's in the warm-up room and standing in the wings, but once he hits the platform. Do you think he's gonna let it loose for the third today? I don't know, you know, if if squats and bench were an indication, I don't believe anything he's doing on the opener because I seen what he did in the squats, and then all of a sudden things got serious, so. <laughs> he's a bit of a man of a mystery, isn't he? Interesting guy, Martin. Yeah. The mystery man, Martin, the mystery man. Me and my nicknames. Andres Soto, we're in the 120 plus kilo class and 242.5 kilos, 534 pounds being loaded for him. I was talking to him in the back uh, while we are on the break and Looks like he's going to try to hit a, a PR total here Might and also try to take a shot at a, a 600 deadlift. So we're going to see what's going on there. Oh, if you want PRs, no better Our stage than the national stage. Shoto. When you're sharing the platform with the reigning world champion like Jesus Oliveras, it's not hard to get inspired. Uh, 
Andres. It's pretty easy work of it. You see, the cool thing about deadlifts is you look at the first attempt, and you, and you, you always wonder how far somebody's going to go because it's not out of the question to see somebody just jump 10, 20, 30 keys. You know, and that's you take the small opening dead just to solidify the total, so you know the total's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Now you can play. Yeah. Calvin Hugo. Calvin Hugo. 265 kilos, 120 kilo class, 584 pounds for his opening dead. Easy. Easy work. Nicely done, Calvin. Three white lights. Raise the bar to 639 for Nick Goodies. Nicolas Goodies, 290 kilos, 639 pounds. We are in the 120 kilo class now. Smooth, easy opener. That's what you want it to look like. Is it just that easy? It's just that easy. Love it, 683 for Tristan Nasalrod. Tristan Nasalrod opening up with 310 kilos, 683 pounds. Tristan looking to hang as close as possible as Lugo. Lugo has pulled ahead, and he's the bigger deadlifter. But should he start missing, Tristan will have an opportunity to possibly take that Team USA spot on the national team. Yeah, and also the thing about deadlifts is it, out of all the three lifts, deadlifts are just that one lift that sometimes you just pull an ace out of your back pocket and you just do something that nobody ever thought you could do. So maybe we're going to see a big deadlift, a big PR, pull into that, that, that lead for the first, but it's going to be interesting to see what the game plan is, especially giving up you know, one of those attempts earlier on in the meet. I tell you what, Lugo increased his chances when he recruited Matt Gary somehow in the middle of this competition. <laughs> There's Matt Gary behind him. I had a conversation with P. Spencer, producer, and I was like, you know what, this is a tight battle. Um, if Lugo starts missing, Tristan Nasalrod can start hitting. We can see a shift of momentum. Then Pete said I, those chances diminished once he got Matt Gary in his corner. But... Matt Gary doesn't do the lifting for you. Yeah. You, you have to be a gamer. You, you fatigue comes finish. all of a sudden sometimes, too. Yeah. Fatigue, grip, anything. Anything. 320 kilos, 705 pounds. Oh, yeah. Looks smooth. Look at the focus on Lugo's face as he exits the platform. You know, if he, he's in the lead, but he's not taking his foot off the gas. He knows he can't start celebrating just because you have the lead. It's over when the last deadlift is pulled. Absolutely. You got to put the nail in the coffin. You you can't allow people to hang around. So you're going to see him push, push the pedal and, and just try to bring it out of reach. Fight for every lift. It's not over until the final pull. Pablo Oliveris, 120 plus. And... 320 kilos remains on the bar. Pablo makes easy work of 705 pounds. Easy. Easy. Looks like a final warm-up. We're going to raise the bar to 760 pounds for Brandon. 345 kilos, 760 pounds for Brandon Bam Bam Dudley in the 105 kilo class. Here, 
Someone in the crowd just asked him out loud, why are you here? And it's to get himself onto that national team. Whoa. Smoke show. You know, sometimes you need that reminder, I don't gotta tell you. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, it's always cool to have people in your back just putting that battery pack and charging you up from the back and there. And you know, that was, that was only 10 kilos underneath his, be his personal best. And so I can only assume that second attempt is going to be a personal best for him. And he's going to try to pull into that number one spot. Michael Davis, 345 kilos will remain on the bar. 760 pounds. He is a phenomenal deadlifter. If you follow him on Instagram, you know his top end well into the 800s. We'll see if he pulls that out today. Oh. <laughs> 760 pounds offers no resistance for Mikey Davis. That's a bad man. That is a bad man. Talking about bad men. Jesus Oliveras waits in the wings. 355 kilos, 782 pounds for an opener. Look at this man. You know, they call that the hero angle when they're shooting up. Sometimes you get on a knee to get that angle. You don't need to do that with Jesus Oliveras. You're always looking up. You got to get on your tippy toes just to get on that angle. Every <laughs> angle is the hero angle for Jesus Oliveras, and he's earned it. Look at him strut to the platform like the titan he is. It's one of those once in a lifetime opportunities to see a man this strong apply his trade. And it's <laughs> awe inspiring. Oh man. How many men walking the earth are as strong as this young man right here? <laughs> yeah, I bet my life is three white lights, but uh, we'll stay for the official calls. There it is. There we go. See, ev every single time, those, those lights take a little longer. <laughs> start holding your breath. You start staring at the refs like, don't, don't play with me now. <laughs> don't play with me now. Not today. James Key... Um, Looks like he's going to allow 225 kilo the clock to wind down. He's giving his fellow competitors a moment to rest. And where are we going to go? Judging off what we just saw, Jesus Oliveras handling 355 kilos. 398.5 kilos is the official American record and world record. And Jesus Oliveras is credited with, or sir, uh, where are we here? 400 kilos. Obviously, that was done at a local meet then. If it's not a record, yeah. Will we see a world record attempt? An official, unofficial world record attempt? I think we will. I think he'll he'll do something just shy of it on his second. And depending on how that moves, we're going to see something really spectacular to end off the day. And a fitting ending to a to a good weekend. We might be witnessing history with Jesus Oliveras' final poll. Andres Soto, 252.5 kilo. 556 pounds, 10 kilo jump from his opener. Oh, that's a bit of a struggle though, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> you know, that was a bit of a struggle. I'm not sure, but he's going to want to load up for his third. What do you think of Delaney? 
Yeah, no, I, I can see it in his face. I know that his goal was to try to take a shot at six today, and I don't know if that's that's there today. I don't I don't know what the uh, what what the thirds are gonna be. But I I think he's gonna take something though. I just don't know what it is. And I knew my man Martin could not resist <laughs> taking a 52.5 kilo jump from his opener. I told you. <laughs> You know, he's like, ah, maybe we lay off for deadlifts then. I don't know. It's going to be a long day. He goes in the warm-up room. Yeah, no, we're going full send. Load up 600. Yeah, I know you said he's going to be carrying the heavy stuff for SVD. I, after this, I think he's going to yeah. be in the hotel room chilling, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> recovering. Oh. Send it. Send oh, it. Oh, wow. And he locks it out. <laughs> oh, whoa. All smiles. Yikes! Talk about work! Wowzers! He sent it. I mean, the gall of this man to tell me he was going light and just gonna have a little fun. Look at this guy. Game recognized game, sir. You had me in the first half, I'll tell you that. You had me in the first half. All right. Won't catch me like that again. Calvin Hugo, back in the 120s, 285 kilos, 628 pounds. Calvin asking the bar to be shifted. Um, you'll do this baby powder sometimes. You put it on your legs so there's no friction as you pull the bar against your legs and it'll come off, hit the platform. You don't want it to be slippery. Nice pull. Easy. It'll be interesting to see what the what the third will be. Yeah, that moved pretty smoothly. Nicolas Gris, 310 kilos, 683 pounds. A 44-pound jump. Partners ready for Nick. Nicolas Curis in the 120 kilo class. Yeah. Nicely done. Throws on another 20 kilo onto his total. And in the rings, Tristan Nieselrod, he knows if he's going to have any hope left in a possible huge upset with a last minute rally, he needs to hit this 330 kilos second attempt. He needs to hit this and Lugo to start missing. Now, Lugo missing is out of his control, but him hitting this full on is. He knows what needs to be done to keep his hopes alive to get on Team USA. This is 727. It ain't over yet. Fight until the very end, young man. Okay. And he does. There's a lot left. He does his job. There's a lot left. There is, too. You're right. I think there is a lot left. You know, I think he's, he's held it back a little bit. That was a well-placed second attempt. I think it's just all going to dictate uh, what happens right here, right now. You're right. And I think once once we get this pull, he's going to do whatever he has to do to try to pull into that lead. And we <laughs> we, we might see a, a yellow moment here. The man they call Chief Lugo. Three hundred and thirty-five kilos, seven hundred and thirty-eight pounds. And he does it. Yep. 335. It was work, though. Yeah. I mean, if you're comparing to Tristan Nazarods, it was work, though, but he, he clinched it. So, yeah, de definitely not as much left as there was for Tristan's, which will be very interesting as to what happens on these third deads. I agree. This is this is it. You, 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 you want to get that ticket? You want to punch your slot? 
You got you got to go all in now. Ten toes down. Ten toes down. Tristan has a 350 kilo final attempt in, which will give him 910 kilo. But you can change your final deadlift a couple times. Lugo now with a 9, 12 and a half kilo total. So they might put in a number for Tristan, um, expecting possibly if Lugo misses his third, they'll just beat the total he has right now without his third. Pablo Olivares, 340 kilos, 750 pounds. Just that lockout. Mm. Brandon Dudley now, 357.5 kilos. 12 and a half kilo jump from his opener. 2.5 kilo PR too. See how this goes. Looks like he's got more room to grow for his third. Struts off that platform with confidence. Look at him. Look at him. The interesting thing is that's only 10 kilos away from the American deadlift record for his oh weight wow. class. So we might we might see him go try to take that today. What, what do you think? By the way he strutted off that platform, confidence is not going to be an issue to load that up. Michael Davis talking about American records, 368 kilos. 811 pounds, Michael Davis looking for a record, and what is the world record by chance? 390.5. You might see that on the third, depending on how this moves. An American record nonetheless. <laughs> I think that'd be ambitious, the lady. That's when I know you're flex, man. <laughs> you got the belief of it. <laughs> Put it on there, he'll do it. <laughs> Michael Davis, this is a massive second attempt. Everyone is on their feet for this poll. Whoa, no, can't, can't lock that out just. Mm. You know that I for a second there was about to say he had it and just before he's getting the down command it just didn't come close enough uh, soon enough started coming out of his hands with a bit of grip issue I think he might get this if he tries it again yeah he, no no question about it. he's gonna get on his third I think it was just a slight grip issue sometimes you get a little excited you pull a little bit too fast and don't really get your your hands set and on the bar and if I if I know Mikey, he's he's gonna crush this next time around. Well, if it's about excitement, I'm telling you, everybody in the room is on their feet cheering, so that's understandable. And expect people to get excited again. Jesus Oliveras with 385 kilos, 848 pounds, and we are inching closer and closer to history. Should he choose to attempt it for his third? Yeah, this is exactly what I thought. Right shy of the record right now, and then let this dictate where you go. That's right. This is the this is your uh, permission slip. That's that's exactly the record. It. That's it. Joey's watching. You get my permission if you make this move like a like a second attempt should. Boom. Well, I think you're loading up the unofficial world record, ladies and gentlemen. No questions about it. No questions about it. Yeah, they're having the conversation right now. He's looking at the crowd like, are you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's throwing up the number one, and that is undisputed at this point. 
the king of the jungle, Jesus Oliveras. They come no bigger. That is your apex predator in the IPF world. We're going to raise it to 540 pounds for, for Rod. 245 kilos being loaded for James Our Key. And just to keep you updated, so Tristan Nasalrod has a 350 kilos third deadlift attempt. I'm expecting that's a placeholder because that's a 20 kilo jump and obviously 330 was work. Lugo has 345 kilos. And uh, that's probably more along the lines of what he's capable of. James Key makes easy work at 245, lays it down like he's laying down a baby to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like he was in a library and didn't want to disturb anybody. He's like, you know why I'm here. I'm here for the bench, that's all. Yeah, I mean, he's not, you know, there's levels to this game, and <laughs> he's on another level. Hey, just a quick question. You but, yeah, look, there's a bit of game day coaching going on in this battle between Lugo and Nasalrod. Lugo, I think, is going to be good for 345 kilos, though, and that'll push his total to 922.5, and that's going to be out of reach for nasal rod. That might be Lugo's play here. We'll obviously keep you updated. And this is when those game day coaches start earning their money or slice of pizza, whatever the deal was worked out. Yeah, yeah, this is this is where it all comes down to. Fourth quarter, two minutes left. You gotta make a play. That's right. Drive we, down the field. We got some deadlift placeholders up on the board. Uh, for anyone listening, you are allowed to change your last deadlift twice. Obviously a great advantage, deadlifting second. Um, however, Lugo can obviously push this with a deadlift well within his means out of reach for nasal rod. I'm just being told Jesus Oliveras might be going for an unofficial world record total as well. Thank you, Pete Spence, our producer. Oh my goodness, waking up this morning, I thought we were gonna see some kilos fly. I didn't think we see the biggest total in IPF history. And Delaney, of all the sessions I asked you to sit in, now, now your commentary is going to be historic. So, <laughs> whenever people look back on this, these clips, it's going to be a part of history. Yeah, it's going to be a part of history. This is crazy. And if that last deadlift was any indication, I mean, I even not? think the world record is going to fly, and there's going to be more left in the tank. At this point, the way the weight is being shifted, you can see Joey Flex deliberating right now. Thanos himself. <laughs> Not Thanos himself. Look at he's got the keys to the Lamborghini right now. Are you gonna take this thing out for a spin and load up those kilos and you have no choice. Punch the hammer, let's go. You don't buy that type of car just to let it sit there. <laughs> You're gonna let it go. Isn't that it though? You're gonna right? let it go. Isn't that it though? I'll tell you what, whatever happens on that third deadlift, it will still be reserved. There will be still be something left in the tank. And if that's the scary part. If, if Jesus Oliveras is putting up the biggest total we've ever seen in IPF history, and that's reserved, that young man is greatness. Calvin Hugo, 295 kilos, 650 pounds for his third and final lift. Pretty smooth pull. Judges agree. That's a PR too. Look, Jesus Oliveras 
has 402.5 kilos listed for his third dead. That can change. That'll give him on 1,110 kilos total, which is an unofficial world record total, unofficial world record deadlift, and officially the strongest man we have in the IPF. On an RPE, 8 to 9. 8 to 8.5 time a day. Yeah, I'll let you. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I'm a little beside myself. Forgive me. Nicholas. Good ease. 335 kilos. Just a little too much for him today. <laughs> Producer Pete Spence giving me more notes. So, Ray has done 1,112.5 kilos previously. The IPF record is 11105. So this is based on so Ray had done that not in an IPF international event. Okay. Not international judging. Okay. So that's why the world record um, is a little bit lower than what Ray has done. I believe that was at the Arnold, if I'm not mistaken. Ray, uh, Pete's saying yes. So the Arnold that year, some years is world record, some years it wasn't. And that was a, a year when it wasn't. Thank you, Pete. Keeping track of all these records and what's official, what wasn't official. Pablo Oliveras, 340 kilos. Finish the day. There we go. Nicely done. There we go. All the tension. Hold in your breath. Second time's a charm. <laughs> Second time's a charm. And he does it. Pablo showing the heart of a lion. Misses, says, no, sir, this is not how my day ends. And the Chief Lugo. Matt Gary hangs over his shoulder. 345, 342.5 kilos on the bar. 755 pounds. Can he put it away? Lugo can put this out of reach for Tristan Nasalrod right now. Mm. Oh, whoa. Wow. I think he's done it. Wow. Chief has done it. Finish the day. What a way to finish the day for that young man. What a way to finish the day for Lugo. Beautiful last pull. 900. And let me take a look at his total. 920 kilos. And Tristan Naselrod looking for the Hail Mary pass to take it from Lugo. This, this is, I mean, this, this is, is where champions are made. This is, this is why you're here. You're not, you're not here to, to come out and leave gas in the tank. You leave it on E. 800 on pounds. E. Look at Tristan working himself into a frenzy. A pull. This would be the craziest. This is the Hail Mary pass. Empty the tank. Yeah. Bet on yourself and empty the tank. You know what? He's got nothing to lose. It, he wants to go to the world championships. He's got a dream. Earn it. Earn it, my man. When he goes to sleep at night, he dreams of USA across his chest. It's up to you, young man. Who do you want to be? Oh, wow. oh! Talk about hard on him, too, ah. though. 800 pounds to his knees. Tristan Nazarod giving Matt Gary and Lugo a bit of a scare there. You can see in his face, he gave everything he had. Yeah, that yeah, is like what it's he, about. He had nothing left, he, he gave everything. Leave it on the platform. Right down, listen, we thought, you know what, Lugo's starting to run away with it a little bit. Tristan Nazelrod's like, I'm not out of this fight. And 800 came to his knees. 100%, I mean, and that's why that last deadlift was so important. He misses that last deadlift, and all of a sudden you get to Pull back a couple of kilos, and he, we might, we might have somebody else going to the world championship. 
365 kilos for Bam Bam Dudley. Bam Bam home so fast Ooh. up to the lockout and Bam Bam stunting on that. Bam Bam, 365 kilos, 804 pounds, has the crowd on their feet. and 70.5 kilos loaded for Michael Davis. 816 pounds. This is the American record right here. Missed 368 on grip. And decides, up. you know what? Yeah, let's go up. Why not? That's Mikey for you. I didn't get my singlet out of my closet for no reason. Whoa! Oh. That same grip issue plagues him in oh. the last poll. And he holds on to that and that goes up. Still that put on up. an amazing show. Yeah. <laughs> And it all comes down to this. So in terms of the unofficial world record, that's still gonna be held by Ray Lewis, or Ray Williams, sorry. And it seems like Ray Williams will always be attached with Jesus Olivares until they finally clash. You can't say one name without the other. Put a pin in that. I'm sure we'll see that in the near future. But until then, 402.5 kilos. Is is 887 pounds. Right here. That's right. Unofficial world record attempt for Denver. And he blew it up. Oh, whoa. And he blew it up. Absolutely destroyed that weight. Unofficial world record deadlift. It's not total. <laughs> oh my God. That is the biggest feat of strength we have ever seen in the IPF. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. The single greatest feat of strength we've seen. And it was a seven. And he blew it, it up. A that seven. was a seven. That was a it seven was a out seven. of ten on his scale. You can only imagine what you're going to see in a few weeks. Yeah, I mean, if you ever needed incentive to make sure you're watching the IPF World Championships, how can you miss the, the sequel to what we just watched today? The, you, you can't. You can't. I, I mean... Look Look at the room, it, it packed up just to see this final attempt. Everybody was on their feet, everybody was holding their breath, and he did it effortlessly. <laughs> <laughs> like there was still 225 on the bar, so. Yeah, and this is him, you know, when he's hitting the platform in this environment, same with Michael Davis, now sprinkling all the, look at Pablo, what a touching moment there. His younger brother sharing the platform at the Nationals. Both of them have world championship aspirations. Another sports moment, and picture these gentlemen at the IPF World Championships amongst the world's best power lifters, and things just got leveled up in terms of intensity, if that's even possible. Taking a look at the scoreboard here, um, Lugo clinching that 120, 
spot on Team USA. Michael Davis, the 105, and Jesus Oliveras, obviously the 120 plus. And um, my friend, I am all types of worked up. <laughs> <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, if you had to sit in on a session, I think you got in on a good one, my friend. Yeah, I mean, like I said, there are, there are a lot of heavyweights smashed all throughout this entire weekend, but there's nothing like it just being the big dogs, and they're they're hitting almost 1,000 pounds or 1,000 pounds, 500 pinch, 600 bench. You know, the pound-for-pound pound debate, it's always, it's always cool, but just raw strength and just seeing a ton of weight being moved, there's nothing like it. You hold your breath every time, and yeah, it's phenomenal to see. That is very well said, where you'll always have the pound, the p pound for pound debate, whatever formula you want to use. You know what formula Jesus Oliveras likes to use? Kilos. That's and it. They, and they speak volumes when they add up That's it. to the type of kilos he shifted. We actually have Jesus Oliveras. I thank you for sitting in. We're going to swap. Me. We're going to have to do this again. I'll see you in South Africa, young always. man. My friend, oh my goodness, <laughs> um, had no idea you would be making history today myself. What are your thoughts right now, the touching moment with your family, your brother meeting you in the wings after that? How are you feeling right now? Um, it's a pretty surreal moment just because um, from last year, just right on the wrongs, you know, it was really a big hit to, hit to my ego and just my mentality as a competitor to like be able to have my deadlift as my as my trump card and then to go through a transition where I had some unhealthy weight gain and then it's almost been like a year and a half of just working on my nutrition working on my deadlifts just mastering my craft making sure that I don't have any weaknesses as a competitor and then to do it in front of my family um, they were traveling from East Dallas and it's just it's just a real surreal moment especially to do it as my last meet as a junior, I'm gonna be aging out at Worlds. So like this is an all-time record for a junior, wrapped and sleeved. Um, and I think it's like number three, number two, number top four all-time, untested, tested. So to do that as a drug-free athlete, it's just I think it's a testament to um, to God. You know I I think I did a, a podcast when I talked a little bit about mental health and. Around 2019, no, like 2018, like the fall going into the winter, it's just like from the moment I decided to walk away from that part of my life and just to build and build, to make it here, to be in an all-time position and like the golden era of powerlifting, I would like to say, a lot of I think a lot of people would agree. It's just a very surreal moment, very surreal. What would you tell that 2019 Jesus Salavares? I would tell him, I mean, because I'm real big on, like, like hypothetical time travel and everything, so it's like, I think I would just tell him, like, don't stray the course, just keep keep grinding, like, your moment's going to come, and it's just like, I'm a small town boy, like, I've, I've talked about, like, just uh, the legacy that I'm leaving, and it's just to be at this point, at the age of 23, like, it's... Everything, all I want to do is just give God thanks for putting me in this position, for giving me the gift. Because uh, trust me, Ryan, I know that I, <laughs> I got a gift. And it's just to be able to maximize it at this point. It's just, I, mean, I, I really can't, I really don't have much words for it. My friend, the feeling's mutual. I was lost for words watching you. I can only imagine what it be like um, having your parents watch. How special was it to have your brother sharing the platform with you every step of the way? And I seen just after he would pull, he would see you in the wings, stop by, make eye contact, and give you a little something something. I mean, that's really the vision that I had, just bringing him into powerlifting, because I did power, I, I competed for a year by myself, and then he got to go to my first meet, and then he kind of got bit by the bug. He was in a similar position where like, we just loved training, but we didn't know where to invest our energy and focus into. So by opening that door to him and just being able to share those moments with him, it's just ridiculous because I've seen him squat. I've seen him struggle with 500 pounds and then to be able to see him squat 804 last December 
I know he had a couple of hiccups today, but it's his first national meet. Like, literally, as we were walking by, we were just talking about what cues we can fix, like, um, what, how to better prepare for next time. Because a, nas a lot of people don't understand, there is a difference between a local level meet, a national level meet, and world. So I think for me, what gave me the edge to be able to go 9 for 9 today, PRs across the board, and just execute the way that I did, was the fact that I went to Worlds, like the fast pace, um, like the breaks were super short, and that a local meet, when you have like 200 kids in like one day, you kind of have like almost an hour between lifts, and that's such a big advantage, so it's like, like I already told Pablo, I was like, dude, like, like next meet, like it's going to be a different game, like, because I know he has aspirations to go compete at Junior Worlds, so I think this is going to help him and propel him to potentially win. Um, now, obviously, I'm a little biased. He's my, my younger brother. Like, I get to see him working day, every day. And, you know, hopefully we can go contend to get him a world championship in, I uh, forget what month, World Juniors is. Yeah, I, I, I remember at the Open World Championships in Sweden, in the warm-up room, you had told me, my brother's coming. Yeah. And you're going to see... You weren't lying, my friend. Talking about the World Championships, what are some of the goals you have now with everything you're starting to achieve? These world records are falling. The unofficial world record for total still held by Ray Williams. Yeah. It seems like your two names forever attached. Ray obviously had to pull out of this meet because of injury, but what are some of the goals moving forward that you would like? Um, so obviously now uh, we have a short turnaround to go and prepare for Worlds. Gonna take a couple of days off to just let my body heal up and get ready for this final push. I don't think we're gonna see anything bigger than what we had today, just because obviously Sheffield is um, in March 2023. Like that is the big target I think for everyone. And I feel like as long as I play my cards right, I stay healthy, I could potentially win it all. And I I say that with full confidence. You know, I know I think obviously everyone's favoriting Taylor because his world record and his IPF world record is 100 kilos and like with the formula and everything. So hopefully I can uh, continue improving at the rate that I've been. And I just think the biggest key to that is just staying healthy and just being a dog in the gym and just staying honest. Um, I just want to take this moment to also give like my training partners, Michael Davis, uh, Enrique Lugo, Pobs. Um, we just, we're creating a culture where we just keep each other honest. You know, if there's a lift, it's like iffy we're just gonna call each other out and be like nah but that was bs like don't count it and then it's just kind of how we've just helped each other continue progressing as a team so hey uh, i mean it the proof is in the pudding and it showed right here the progression has been phenomenal by all you individuals i can't wait to see you at worlds and hopefully at sheffield and how special will it be some things gotta you know who knows how it's gonna happen how special would it be if the Ray Williams clash happens at Sheffield, that'd be the ultimate dream, wouldn't it? I think it would. Um, I've, I've like literally, I, I got a lot of people asking me like, oh, like did you, like when did you know you were going to be big in powerlifting? When did you have an idea that you were going to be like a world level athlete? And for me, the standard wasn't being a world level athlete. The standard was Ray Williams. So since the moment I teamed up with Joey. Like, that was literally the first conversation we had, was literally, if we stick together, if we keep our eyes on the goal, that matchup's gonna happen, because I know for a long time, nobody came close to Ray. He's just, he's on Mount Rushmore for a reason, on a lot of people's list, and that's just because his legacy speaks for itself. You know, like, I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. It saddens me that he's just continued, just, it's bad luck, you know? So I hope he gets well. I hope he um, gets an opportunity to qualify, and hopefully that matchup happens in Sheffield because I think, like at that point, you know, it's just gonna, it's just, man, we, there's really no way of predicting what's gonna happen in March. You know, it's a long way from here, 11 months. So hopefully he gets well um, and he gets some good training in, and he comes close. As, as I hope, I pray that he comes in the best shape of his life because that's what sports about. It's about two household names going head to head and whoever comes out on top, whoever executes the best, the person who puts in the most preparation, that's who should be the winner. Listen, if the gods of powerlifting could grant us anything, it's you versus Ray Williams at Sheffield. That would be can't miss. That would be the biggest showdown possibly in powerlifting history. Um, but 
not to freak you out a little bit, young man, but the same way you look up to Ray Williams, people are seeing what you're doing and looking up to you like that right now. Congratulations, this is your time. You Absolutely. are the best in all of the IPF by the only conversion that matters, the kilos. Yeah. And uh, I can't be happy for you, sir. Yes, sir, I appreciate it. Yes, sir, thank you, man. Thank you for tuning in. We promised you fireworks. My man delivered.